Hello and welcome back to the DC United Kingdom podcast. Um, as always, I'm your host, James Graham. As you'll see alongside me over here, um, I'm going to have to do it that way around. I normally do it that way. Eh, we'll see what happens when I do come to the edit. Um, as you see, I've got Steve Birnbaum, who's making his second appearance on the show. It's been about two years since he was last on, but welcome back. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. Thank, thanks for having me back here. Um, no, it's good to be back on and yeah, talk to you and um, let everyone know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's obviously, it's been two years, but it's been a while since you've been back on the pitch. So first yeah. up, how's the ankle doing? Yeah, it's doing well. Um, much, uh, much better now. Um, you know, it's been quite the road to recovery, much, uh, much longer than I anticipated, obviously, mm-hmm. uh, when we first, when I first got injured last season. Um, you know, it was frustrating because we didn't know exactly what it was. Okay. Um, but we thought it was a bone bruise. We thought it was, um, we, we weren't quite sure, which was scary um, right. for a while. Yeah. So it was mostly like, all right, we're going to shut you down for that in the season, see if, you know, time off helps. Um, and then, you know, as I started taking time off, yeah, it did get a little bit better. But then mm-hmm. when I started running and doing other things, I just couldn't do it. Um, so I had uh, the first surgery done yeah. um, the beginning of this year. Uh, I believe in January and it was uh, one of those things where it was kind of a trial by error okay. because no one was still sure of what was yeah. going on. Um, so yeah, I had some bone fragments taken out that we thought were causing Ooh. the pain. Yeah. On both sides of the ankle, there's two scars on both sides of the ankle. Oh, nice. Yeah. And uh, so that was pretty painful. Um, and, you know, that was, you know, after about a month, um of rehabbing and and doing things you know i realized that you know didn't quite solve the issue um Mm. so you know now i started getting even more stressed out and you know wondering what was going to happen and uh got a a second and third opinion and um went out to a doctor in wisconsin and he um you know he kind of did the whole shebang to my ankle and uh took out took out a bone released some tendons released some Mm. nerves Ooh. And, um, yeah, I mean, I felt much better just immediately after the surgery and, uh, I'm progressing and I'm back in training now. So I just started training, yep. uh, this past week, um, with the team. And so I'm extremely excited to be back. I wasn't, I, I wasn't sure what was going to happen, honestly, yeah. you know, for, for a very long time, it was, it was very nerve wracking and, um, it was probably the, it's been, you know, almost 10 months now. Um, since I really played the neck, yes. beginning of September, I believe end of yeah. Yeah, beginning of September was the last time I played. Um, and I had dealt with this throughout the season last year. It kind of happened the, like mid season mm. and I would not really pl- practice and then just played in games through pain. Um, so it's been lingering on for about a year now. Right. Um, yeah. And so it's extremely exciting for me this past week, just to be back out there getting my fitness back, getting touches on the ball. I mean, it's been way too long. So uh, I was in a dark place, but, you know, it's shining yeah. through now. Exactly. There's always light at the end of the tunnel, isn't there? Yes, there is. It seems to be that way. So I'm excited. Yeah. Um, don't know a specific date um, or anything like that, but, yeah. you know, it's more of just, you know, taking it, taking it not, not slow, but, you know, want to be cautious enough to not aggravate it again um, yeah. and make sure we're taking the right steps to, make sure I'm fully healthy and ready to come back um, in the right way. Yeah. And that's pretty much answered my next question, which was, do we know a return date? So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, it's a, it's a progression through trainings, right? I've yeah. been, um, I was not in contact a little bit last week, yep. getting a little bit more integrated this week. Um, and then it's all about fitness. You know, I haven't played in a game in an extremely long time. Yeah. Uh, and that's obviously a big part for, for her non as well. So, yeah. um, you know, I've been working on that as many ways as possible through bike through you know other different forms of cardio lifting and stuff like that and then obviously getting back in practice is the biggest one so yeah um that's kind of yeah the whole gist and i I, there is no timeline really it's more of how i feel and um it's just it's it is what it is at this point yeah and i know a lot of fans are eager to see you back playing on playing for the black and red and seeing you back on the pitch because we have missed you um I, i don't think that's we're not going to be mistaken for saying that, but I think it's going to be really cool to see you back on the field, especially now the fact that we've got fans back in the stadium. I know this weekend it's full capacity and I'm, I'm so excited to see that. Obviously 
I'm not there this week. I was there in the last home game, as you rightly, as you saw. That's right. Yeah, that was um, right. that was a strange old uh, evening. That one for me. Seeing all. Yeah, it was. Yeah. What the heck? I mean, seen. Yeah. I've seen this little carpool coming come around, and then I see a picture of you with with it, and I'm like, <laughs> that's it. I'm I'm done for the yeah. evening. That's it. I was absolutely. <laughs> brilliant so thank you for taking the picture with it because that was just of course really no, that made was, my evening. no that's right it was fun we had a good time with it and uh no it's always good to do stuff like that and we cannot wait you know the guys um you know we talked this week about the fans coming back to full capacity and yeah. just having people there and and you know it, it is weird though but the beginning of the season even as the fans are there and it, they said it was like oh there's only like three five thousand people here. Yeah. i'm like man the stadium feels like packed almost you know it was yeah. The, the atmosphere still was still great in the beginning of the season, but we can't wait for get, you know, to get rocking again and yeah. have full capacity. And it just, you know, makes that home game experience so much better and gives us that push. So I know guys are eager to get out there this weekend. Yeah. I, I, like I said, I'm really looking forward to seeing what that atmosphere is going to be like. I'm going to be up watching the game, obviously. I think it's a one o'clock in the morning kickoff over here. Ooh. So, Ooh, oh, that's an easy one, that one. <laughs> easy. It's when, it, right. it's, it's when it gets to like half two, three o'clock in the morning. That's when it's like, do I stay awake? <laughs> well, there was, I think it was the San Jose game. Um, oh, yeah. Um, but I ended up not staying up, but I went to sleep very early and got and set up a very early. That makes sense. That would have been like 5 30 your time or something. <laughs> that, it, it felt like, well, I think it was the 3 30 kickoff. And then oh, it was okay. like, well, I'm. I'm not going to go back to sleep. I'll just stay up the rest of the day. And it was a normal day after that. I got to about 10 in the evening. I was like, "Mm, I should, I should go to bed. (laughs) But my Xbox is calling me just over there. And I'm thinking, I could probably play a couple more games. Yeah. Priorities, you know? Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's, (laughs) this is my downtime, you know? So, um, one of the questions that I had, and I know one of the fans wanted to know as well was obviously you're back in training now. Um, and the last time you trained was, would have been under Ben? Correct yeah, me if I'm wrong um, on that one. Under Ben uh, in August of last year. Yeah. So what has that difference been like for you, especially coming back from this injury, to have training with one guy and then suddenly training with another guy? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, for me, I've been extremely excited to just get back out there. Um, mm. You know, not just because I love playing soccer and I want to be with the guys, but... <laughs> Um, also, you know, Ben was my only coach, um, as a professional. So, you know, I was with him for, you know, seven, seven, eight years or whatever. And mm-hmm. so now to have a different voice out there and, um, a different, um, uh, just take on trainings or a different style. Um, it's exciting for me cause it's just something new. So, um, I've been, I've been really excited to get back out there and, and see what the trains look like. And they've been fun. Um, you know, today we did some small side stuff, which is, you know, it's always fun. It's competitive, yeah. um, but also go through the tactics and stuff like that. It's, it's nice to be out there to understand what the guys are learning each week. And then you can kind of see it, you know, um, take shape in the game. So yeah. uh, now it's my turn to kind of, you know, I'm getting a bit of a late start, but just kind of learn the system and understand, you know, how he wants me to play or how he wants, you know, certain positions to play. So yeah. um, it's been, it's been good to get back out there and, it is different, you know, obviously I'm used to having, I was used to having one coach for so long yeah. explaining certain things to me or going through similar types of practice. Um, yeah, his, it's definitely a different, a different way of going about it. And, um, you know, I'll have to get used to it. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of the style of play, how impressed have you been with the sides since Hernan's come in and the new way, the new way of play? Yeah, it's been, I mean, from, a, you know, the, the bleachers and the stands, it's been, yeah it's been extremely entertaining. Um, I think, yeah. uh, the guys are, I think, you know, probably one of the fittest teams in the league right now. Um, and it shows in the games and it puts teams under pressure where, um, they don't feel comfortable. I don't think, you know, I feel like even the games that we lost, we deserve either to, yeah. to get a tie or win. And, um, we've had chances and, you know, maybe not have been, you know, the best, um, at finishing those games, but, you know, we're coming into our own and you see against Miami, how, you know, we completely dominated that game and it was yeah. fun to watch. You know, I enjoyed watching it and, you know, it could have been eight goals that game um, yeah. or something like that. I mean, we had a ton of chances. It was ridiculous. So. Yeah. And we just, you know, I think the way that, you know, he wants us to play is to, you know, turn them over in their half and just go straight to goal and, and, you know, kind of 
just flip the script on them. So it's, um, it's, it's fun to watch. I'm excited to get back. I'm excited to get back out there and experience it and understand, um, you know, what it's like to just constantly kind of press and press and press and be in there, uh, you know, on your toes and moving forward. So, um, that's, that's what I'm excited about. And, um, the guys are really taken to it and it looks, it looks nice. Yeah. And has Hernan um, spoken to you about your particular role in that side yet? Or is it just until you're back in training, that's when you start finding out where you play in that system? Yeah, I've kind of bounced around a little bit, um, just kind of getting integrated back with the team. You know, I was used for certain numbers and on, you know, one day, the next day, it's a different position. So yeah. um, I'm not exactly sure uh, where he sees me. I'd be excited to play anywhere um, right now. I just want to get back out there. So um i i don't know we haven't had that exact conversation um you know i think he knows i can play on both the right and left side yep um i've proved that you know i play on the left side for the last couple of years so yeah um i can play on the right side in the middle i can you know wherever he needs me i'm i just want to help the team out and i'd love to play so yeah that's really good. and do you think we'll see a screamer from you like we did with hindsight in the first game <laughs> of the season <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I figured that was something like that was coming. No, I mean, that was an unbelievable goal. I was, I was in a perfect angle to see that uh, live, and I was blown away. Came out of nowhere, and um, what a goal that was from him. So I, was, I would not expect that um, if from the fans listening. I wouldn't expect that from me. I hope you guys are expecting that. Um, if it happens, great, but don't expect that from me. So no, no nosebleeds from you then? No, you know, if I try it, you know, it, it, it could be embarrassing, but we'll see. Yeah, you, you you won't know until you try it. That's exactly it. You don't, yeah. you don't, you don't score. Yeah, exactly. Um, a couple more fan questions that we had in. So um, one that came in from Brian, which was, over the years you've you've been playing as a pro soccer player, what's the most ridiculous thing that you've seen on the training pitch? On the training field? Yeah. Oh. I know it's a bit random, that one. but um... Yeah, that's, that's a good one. Um, I mean, there's so many different cases i've seen so many different like altercations and fights or whatever okay. between guys yep. i think those are always entertaining sessions you know when it gets really competitive and guys go after it um yep. you know I don't, I don't think i'll ever forget those you know wayne's probably first training he came all right um, okay yeah he uh <clears throat> we were playing it was almost like a it was almost like a small side 11 v 11 it was it was a bigger field but smaller mm. than a regular size field and he kind of gets out in space and it, it was super casual, but he like chipped the goalie from like when no one expected it from like 30 yards on like the corner side, everyone, they came out of nowhere. And I was yeah. like, okay, well, this is what we got now. And that was kind of like an eye opener. And I was like, all right, here we go. Um, I'll, I don't think I'll forget that. So yeah. that was definitely one of the, uh, the experiences for sure. Yeah. And I'm just going to throw a little uh, curveball into this one um, on top of that. What's the most ridiculous thing you've seen on the pitch? And don't say anything with Wayne Rooney because that's just a that's a cliche of a thing right now. Yeah, um, I mean, gosh, the most ridiculous. We played in a game in RFK. Uh, I want to say 2017. Mm. Uh, 2017 or no, it might have been 2015, and it was a, It was 2015. And it was like a six, five game against uh, Salt Lake and yeah. no one wanted to defend. No one was playing. There was a couple screamers. It was an all time game for me. That was pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, Jermaine Jones thing after the, um, you know, after the playoff playoff game where he ran up and was pushing the ref, that was a wild game. There's just so many. It's, I'm trying to think of all the yeah. stuff right now. Uh, I'll never forget Messi's free kick in Copa America when I was there um, oh. against Argentina um so that was pretty cool yeah it's just there's so many there i'm trying to think of the craziest ones but stuff like that you know just crazy ones like that yeah definitely and i'll allow you now to say wayne rooney's uh on half goal or that tackle. yeah i mean he, he had a couple of them for he us did. you know yeah um always yeah. against orlando <laughs> yeah exactly it's they had a rough go against him. They did. It's a shame that he's not here now to uh, have done that again uh, this season, but yeah, there yeah. we go. Um, one last sort of fun question that we had in, which was Ben's Chili Bowl. Do you ever go there? 
You know, we I went there. I used to live like right by there. Um, yeah. My wife, when we moved in into DC together, um, we lived right down there, and so we went a couple times. Um, but you know, we also went with the team yeah. um, for a couple of photo shoots and stuff like that. So we've been there. Yeah, um, yeah I've been there. I want to say you know like maybe five, six times. Yeah, and yeah it's so a, I've been there. Times. Is there a particular thing that you would that you would order from there? No, you know, I've tried a bunch of different things. I don't know if there's like a specific one. Um, the hot dogs just obviously like with, with just fully loaded, just loaded up. Nice. Yeah, I, I, I took that. So nice. Um, no, but we we bounce around that area all the time, and um, what a historic historic place that is. And obviously, it's so cool to be there and see the people in there. And what a um, they've just done such a good job with that place. Yeah, it's on my to do list when I next come out there is to get there and. And sample yeah. the goodness of the food because yeah. everyone says it's great. It's great. They have they have you know music bumping all the time. There's people coming in now. People hang out in the booths and just chat. Yeah. Um, and it, it's it's a good time. So no, we I've seen Ben Olson walking around there occasionally too. <laughs> I mean, he's he's just going to be there all for the he's rest of his life, local. isn't he? Yeah, he's just a local. Yeah. Um, so. I want to ask a couple of things that we normally do when I do this sort of getting to know DCU um, yeah. before we wrap things up. Um, I know I can't go through them all, uh, but the section that really gets everyone talking is the teammate questions. So, okay. all uh, right. So we'll okay. go through this. I know you're, you're the captain, so you're going to have some <laughs> good answers. All right. Um, I got to, I got to be ready. All right. All right. So your, your first one is who's got the worst taste in music? The worst taste in music. Yes. Ooh, you know what? Uh, I want to say Russell Knauss because he just okay. goes with he just goes with everything mainstream. If that makes sense, he just right, like is okay. playing. He, he's like a chameleon. He's like just oh, I'll play some of the Latino music. I'll play. You know, he wants to appease everyone. Yeah, you okay. know, but he's the most mainstream. You know, yeah. sometimes um, sites isn't. You know, he's not quite there either i, I don't want to say i'll be honest he's a bit mine's older. Not, yeah he's a bit older but mine's not great either because i'm more of like old school rock and 90s hip hop and not that many of those guys love yeah. that so. i mean to be fair the matter obviously i've had quite a few guys of you guys on and there's been a few rockheads on on the come on the show so a, really i feel know. like i'm the only one playing like limp biscuit in the the gym <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> Get in yeah. there. A little bit yeah. of this. Get, gotta have that one. Yeah. Um, but no, I had Brendan on last uh, on the show last week, and he's a, he's likes a little bit of rock on there. He's got to be in the right mood for it though. Yeah. So um, and Ernan is a is a rock music fan. I had no clue. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, next up is oh, actually no, I'm going to save that one for later. Um, right. Who's the worst dancer in the dressing room? The worst dancer. Yeah. Oof. maybe Griff. Griffin. <laughs> That's not the first tries, time that one's been said. <laughs> he tries to hang with the guys, you know. He, he gets a little dancing going on, but yeah, he's he's up there. I want to say. Oh, brilliant! I love the fact that that's not the first time that's been said either. So that's uh, great. Yeah, uh, I love Griffin Griff a little bit. That's brilliant. Um, biggest prankster. Ooh, biggest prankster. Gosh, you know we we don't we haven't had many pranksters on the team. No. Um, I mean, you can cast your you cast your eyes back, yeah, on the years gone by if you want to. Oh man, oh I don't know that. Thinking, we used to do this thing um, back in the day with a mini basketball hoop, and you hold it above someone behind their the back of their head, and you got to slam dunk it on them. So we used to do that all the time, and I got I got caught a couple times with. Sean Franklin and Davey Arnell, and they they oh. kind of, you know, I was a rookie or two, and they used to hold. I used to, you, getting dunked on is like the worst thing. I don't know if you know, you know, in the United Kingdom, the UK. Yeah. Yeah, we we have basketball over here. Come it's, on. It's a, we're, we're not, we're not in the old feeling. ages. Come on. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying it's a terrible feeling. You know, it's yeah. Very, like, all right, you got dunked on, and uh, we I used to, we used to get that all the time. And Eddie Johnson was like the ringleader on that, so I would say he was a pretty big prankster. Nice. Yeah. Um, this is not a normal question, but initiation process. Do you guys have one for new signings or anything like that? We usually do, you know, rookies that come in, they got to tell a joke. They got to, and they kind of get interviewed by the players. It's in preseason. So um, yeah. tell a joke or you got to sing a song. And then during that time you do, 
they're just like crazy questions that get asked. You got to answer them. Yeah. It's, it's always awkward. It's never, it's never fun, but you know, it's, it's like cringeworthy for, you know, for me watching it. I'm just like, okay. I think, I think I don't, want, I don't to- really want to hear Moses sing, you know? Oh no. <laughs> Thing is, we need to we need to see that recorded and put out on the social because I think that would be hilarious. Yeah, can't can't record. That's a rule. No recording. No oh. putting on social media. Oh, yeah, no. Oh, no that's fun. a shame. Um, so going from things like biggest pranksters um, to who's the most serious in the locker room? Ooh, the most serious in the locker room. Um, let me go through it. There's been a couple of names that I've I'd come say, up a I'd few say, times. I'd say Felipe. Felipe yeah. is the most like serious for sure. Yeah. 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 And I don't know why I didn't think of that immediately. He's like sits right next to me in my locker and I'm trying to mess around with him and he doesn't think it's not happening. <laughs> that, it, it, to be fair, he has been said a few times. Brendan admitted yeah. he's quite serious in the dress in the locker yeah, room. Yeah, Brendan's pretty serious. Yeah, he is. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Yeah, he's yeah, he's right there. But he'll he'll, he'll have a good time here. Yeah. I mean, he's, he comes across as the guy who knows how to have a good time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, on the last show, we were talking about cooking and things like that, and halloumi, halloumi burgers and halloumi with tacos. Oh, man. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to be giving that a try next time I get some halloumi. All right. So we'll see what happens there. Right. I'm going to I'm gonna save this, this last question for you. This is the best one uh, because it always brings up some great answers in this, okay. which is who's got the worst fashion sense? Oh, gosh um chris sites like hands down oh is that because he's he's, a, he's an older dad and he's got many he's, kids he's, he's a dad i feel like he's got five kids at home he's got to mm. pick out he picks out whatever's you know on the top and you look at him you're like i will say though these younger guys i've never seen some of these things like jacob green when he came in the first couple times uh i could not believe what he was wearing um sites is more of just like you know, he's just grabbing things. Whereas yeah. other guys are thinking about it and you go, okay, what are, what are they, what are they thinking? I want to say grip is sometimes there because he wears these like parachute MC hammer pants. Um, it's the young kids really. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's a new age, isn't it? Yeah. I, I don't have that in my locker um, by any means. No. Um, I want to say that. And uh, I'm trying to think, you know, Yordi and these guys wear super tight jeans, like almost compression pants jeans. And I don't know how they sit in them. And those are, you know, in like platform shoes. I'm like, man, y'all look nice. But, I, you know, that's, I don't know. I'm not a fashionista. You know, you have to ask my wife about that stuff. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, I'd, I'd be the same. I'm always just dressed up in football I, I shirts and things. Yeah, I'm the most fashionable. So, like, you know, maybe some people are talking about me behind my back. I don't know. You know, uh, have you come up? I think you've come up once. If oh, I'm honest. Yeah, once. Okay. Now once. you're going to tell me who it is. Uh, who was I'm it? I'm coming at them studs up next time. <laughs> Remember who it was? <laughs> I think it was one of the young guys, if I'm honest. Uh, I think it was. Better. But you, you, you'd you expect you, that. Tweet me, tweet me later and let me know for tomorrow's training. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Oh, yeah, I'm sure it was one of the young guys because that. They see you guys as the old, the older, the dads, and things like that. And yeah. but Chris Seitz has been said for his uh, beige trousers. Yeah, the beige trousers—they're like yeah. long, baggy shorts or yeah. like you know skateboarding shoes. But you know, you feel you, you know, you kind of know what he's. I, I'm getting used to that now with just the two kids. Yeah. Um, all right, just whatever's there. That's it. It's you. You go to you get them sorted out first, and then you exactly. think about yourself later. But you got these 18 year old kids that have all the time in the world and they're picking what they're picking. I'm like, okay. Yeah. They need a, that's a fine in my book. Yes. Um, can I pick your brains on what you think of Eric Sorger's fashion choices? He's up there as well, but yeah. you know what? Like, he can rock it. He looks nice. Yeah. Yeah. His stuff I, is out there, but that's out. him. Exactly. That, that's He's probably the only person in our locker room that could pull that off. Yeah. You know, um, so I, I can't, you know, you can't hate on it. No, not at all. Well, unless, <laughs> unless it blinds you when you when you're scrolling through Instagram, you see his thing come out. Okay, oh, yeah. that's gold. Oh, yeah. So that's exactly it. Yeah. yeah. No, right. Um, I mean, I'm gonna. Um, I said that was the last one, but I'm gonna have to go with one more, which is oh, who yeah. do you think is the best dressed in the dressing room? Then, oof, best dressed. Um, 
Paul's up there. Paul yep. Ariola is up there. He's always looking sharp. Yep. Um, Paul. Yeah. I mean, Yordy's got some swag too. Yep. Paul Yordy. Edison's up there as well. You know, these guys, yeah. they put a lot of thought into it. And the, the, those are the guys I'd say are the best dressed for sure. Nice. Yeah. Um, because that, that's the, only the second time I've asked that question because I asked it oh, Brenton okay. last week and he mentioned uh, Kempen. Kempen is, you know what? I didn't think about Kempen, but he does come in in like a nice classy suit. You're right. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that, that, that was it. It was everything's nice and freshly pressed. There's yeah, no creases. Right. There's um, no creases. His hair is always on point. Yeah, yeah, you know what? I didn't think about it. That's a good answer. Yeah. That's pretty good. Paul's yeah. got Paul's got that swag though, you know. I he love, has. I love Paul, Paul style. I, I wish I could wear the southern stuff he wears, but that's just not me. You, you're a dad now, so you can't. That's, it's not allowed. It. It's not you allowed. wouldn't understand. No, <laughs> no. Give him time. I'm sure he'll come along at some point. In exactly. his life. Then he'll understand that you can't pull that thing off anymore because exactly. he'll just embarrass his kids. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's what I'm aiming to do when uh, my lad is old enough to be embarrassed. Is to do that. Exactly. So um, have we got time for some quick fire questions, do you reckon? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. cool. Right uh, so these ones are this or that. Um, there's, there's only five, so it is very quick fire. Uh, so first one is Ronaldo or Messi? Messi, only because I played against him. <laughs> that's, that, that's, um, a, that's a pretty cool thing to say. Yeah, I think that's only I think that's the only reason. Um, they're both amazing. I think yeah. just just messy, just because of I got to meet him. I think that's probably the coolest. That, that's thing. pretty. That is that's a great claim to fame right there. To yeah, say he, that you played against the did, best in the world. He, and he did me up for a goal, so it didn't doesn't make me feel better. But it's okay. Yeah. No, but it's messy. Yeah, exactly. It's messy. Um, so our next one is: Would you rather beat the Red Bulls or win MLS Cup? Win MLS Cup. But, yeah hands down for me yeah. um dying to get a trophy for um yeah you know for this club and uh it's been a long time and uh, winning mls cup would mean the world yeah is this i, a... I hate the red bulls don't get me wrong oh, yeah. I hate them. yeah yeah but winning an mls cup would be just the best and this is a, this is always a point that everyone mentions is to win mls cup you've got to beat the red bulls along the way yeah it's true yeah i feel like we always meet them you know, in the playoffs or in a crucial match. Yeah. Um, kind of I, I mean, that's if they get that far in the playoffs, because, you know, have they have <laughs> they ever won MLS Cup? Have uh, they got that star? I don't know. We've yeah. got a couple. Ah, it's not for MLS Cup, though, is it? It's yeah. for supporter shields. <laughs> Who wants that? Um, now, uh, you're, you're in the US, I'm in the UK. Do you call it soccer or football? Soccer. Ooh. Yeah. Grew up calling it soccer. I'm yep. never, I don't think I will ever change that. No, it's just ingrained no. in it. Yeah, it is. Because football here, I love watching American football. And I'm yep. a big football football fan here. And um, yeah, you know, I'm American. We call oh, yeah. it soccer. Exactly. And to be fair, soccer is an English term. So we should be calling it soccer as well. I, and I also never, you know, I never played in Europe. So I wouldn't, or anywhere else. So this is yes. the only place I know. Would you ever want to play in Europe, do you reckon? Yeah, you know, I think that was a, a dream of mine kind of, you know, early on, seeing mm. if that was a possibility. It was at one point, um, but it just never panned out. And, yeah. You know, I got a family here and I, I love I love playing for DC. And I, I think the MLS is such a, you know, growing league that yeah. um, I, I wouldn't really want to leave it now um, unless something crazy happened. But uh, no, we, we I think we'd love to stay, stay yeah. here. It's it's you right in saying that MLS is such a growing league because now whenever I speak to people over this side of the pond about it, the tag of the retirement league, which is it for some yeah. reason earned obviously back in the early days, yeah, it's eroding. And now when I can say, well, when you look at some of the players that are playing in Europe who've come over from whether it's directly from an MLS team or whether it's from the MLS academies, it's right. just the list is getting bigger. And that's it. Yeah. When you list players like Weston McKenney, it's just yeah. and yeah. Chris and then Christian Pulisic. And... Yeah. No, it's the the game's growing, you know, in the US big time. And obviously since I've been in the league, it's grown exponentially yeah. uh, to the point where, you know, every, each year it's a it's a leap. So yeah. Um it's fun to be part of that. It's not just a leap in quality, it's a leap in the amount of teams that are playing in it. It's exactly it. <laughs> it's yeah. just insane. Yeah. 
that that's the one thing I, from a fan's point of view, it's it slightly disappoints me that the fact there's so many teams. And yeah. That's probably a bit of a controversial thing to say, but I liked it when you played every single team in the league. Now it's you don't yeah. get the chance to play everyone in the other conference. So yeah. No, I know. There'll, there'll be another crossroads when more teams come in. And yeah, I'd out. imagine so. Uh, next quick fire question is, would you call it a shutout or a clean sheet? Um, a shutout, yeah. Oh, shutout. you're the first one to say that. Yeah, it's a shutout. I don't say clean sheet. I no? feel like that's, I've never, I don't know why I've never said that. It's a shutout. Yeah, no? for sure. I think but, that's more of like an American term, is it not? It is, yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah. Again, when I remember obviously Brendan on last week, he mentioned um, shout outs more like a ice hockey term and things like that. But yeah, I don't know. I've always called it a shout out. Um, yeah. That's, that's, that's interesting to hear. I think I say you're the first, I'm yeah. pretty sure you're the first person who's been on to say that. So I love that. I love it. Yeah. Next one always brings out a good answer is is it Dave Johnson or Devin McTavish? Who do you prefer? Oh, man. Put me on the spot. Oh, him. I know. God. Um, Dave's, in, it's in the net, is too, is too iconic for me. So it's kind of like, you know, he's the the sound of DC, the voice of DC. I love yeah. Devin. I think he's done a great job there as yeah. well. Um, but Dave's, Dave's kind of been there since the beginning um, when I was there, um, even when he was, you know, commentating with Santino um, and, and those guys. So yeah. uh, it's got to be Dave. He was there my, you know, my, me and my rookie year and, um, but Devin's been phenomenal. So I, yeah. I, I love listening to their, their games. Yes, absolutely. And obviously you've had a little bit of time to actually tune in to and listen to the commentary over the last six months or so. Well, nine that's months. So, yeah. No, no, no. But now it's that's it. Up. That's it. You don't have to listen to it anymore. You can you can be there and you can I'm be on the ready. pitch. Soon. It's, uh, it's coming soon, so I promise. Yes. And are we going to get a... a Full length film about your recovery, like we've had with Paul Ariola and Felipe. No, absolutely not. No. <laughs> um, they've never done no, no, no one's shown me for anything. So. Oh, and yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. I, I saw those guys, I'm like, man, they had yeah, yeah. smaller recoveries than I did. So, no, <laughs> those were, those were <laughs> guys, but uh, I know to be no. fair, Felipe was injured after you. Yeah, and he's back soon, and he got that, and he's got a nice feature film out of it. Yeah, got great. You know what? That's what happens. You know, when you're a defender, no one wants to, you know, give oh. you any. Uh, oh, joke. that's not fair. Don't say yeah. that. <laughs> Defenders win games. I have no. They keep problem. our shutouts. Yeah, that's exactly it. No, they. Uh, I have no problem with it. No, I'm. I'm just excited to be back with the guys and be yeah. on the field. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Well, that's everything from me. Um, is there anything you like a message you want to give to the fans um, f- for when you're back or for this weekend? Anything you want to say? Yeah, keep supporting us. Um, come out, bring everyone. We're excited for you guys to come back to the games in full capacity and no restrictions. So we can't wait. I'm personally excited to get back out on the field and see you guys cheering us on. Um, I can't wait for that. I miss it so much. Uh, you guys have no idea. So um I'm ready to get back out there. I miss you all and I'll, I'll see you soon. Awesome. Well, thank you, Steve, for coming out. Uh, well, I say coming out. You, you're in, I'm guessing, some <laughs> yeah, room in your uh, house. You've not really gone anywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. But thank you for taking the time out to uh, come on and speak to myself on this uh, lovely show over here in the UK. Um, to you guys out there who have listened or watched um whether you've done that uh, thank you very much it's much appreciated um if you're on youtube feel free to subscribe and like the video um if you're not following on twitter it's at dc night kingdom and same with facebook and instagram just to add fc at the end um but that is everything um again thank you steve for doing the show with me and until next time bye mosh united <laughs>